a trinomial. Um, so when we had a binomial with two x's, we could easily just factor out the x. The problem is we can't factor out an x here because they all don't share, they all don't have an x, right? And then we can't factor out a single number because they all don't have a common number. So the best thing to go back through um, to factor this trinomial, to factor it, what we're going to do is we need to go back and remember what is a quadratic equation, 8x squared plus bx plus c, which I wrote up in there. So I'm going to show you the long way. But again, ladies and gentlemen, we're going, I'm going to be quickly moving past this and doing these in my head, still talking my way through it. But just to make sure we're all on the same page, basically when you're factoring a quadratic, or I'm sorry, when you're factoring a trinomial, you're going to recreate it as two binomials. If you guys remember factoring binomials, yes, when you factor binomials, you use FOIL, right? Remember that? And remember, what FOIL does is FOIL. When you FOIL two binomials, that's going to create, or depending on it, it will create a trinomial. So basically what we need to do is we need to figure out what these other two values are. So an easy way to visualize that is to basically determine what two values multiply to give you c and then add to give you b. So we look at c, and that's 8. And we look at b, and that's negative 9. This will be the one time I'll take it slow. We should be able to think about what two numbers multiply to give us 8 and add to give us negative 9 which I'll get to in just a second. But what I want to do is, just in case I give you, let's say, 128. And you're like, holy crap, I can't think of all those in my head. So my recommendation is to write down what c is, and then break it down into 8 times 1, 4 times 2, and break it down to all the factors. And the reason why I want to write this out, because I want you guys to think, even when you're doing this in your head, this is what you're doing in your head. You're looking at what two numbers multiply to give me 8, which these are, but then add to give me negative 9. And remember, they have to add to give you a negative 9. So if they're adding to give you a negative 9 but multiplying to give you 8, then the factors all have to be negative. right? Because you can't add two positive numbers and get a negative. right? It has to be two negatives. Two negative numbers add to give you a negative, And two negative numbers multiply to give you a positive. That's the thinking that needs to be going on in your head. So obviously, what are going to be the two? Negative 1 over negative 8. So we add those in. And now again, now we have an expression times an expression equal to 0. So we apply the zero product property. x minus 8 equals 0. x minus 1 equals 0. x equals 8. x equals 1. Solution set 8, 1. 